A couple of years ago, I had a problem. I was late delivering twin turbo vices to people who had prepaid for them. The vices arrive, everything's good except for the screws. The screws have problems, and because of timing and several other factors, the only workable solution was for me to fix them myself, all 1,000 screws. I had to file down by hand this little ledge that kept the gears from slipping onto the ends of the screws properly, and then carefully deburr them because there were some burrs that were preventing the bushings from slipping onto the ends of the screws. Uh, and worst of all, they had a little bit of surface rust on them. Not deep pitting, they weren't ruined. I could clean them up, but that required a chemical treatment, this abrasive treatment that I rigged up, uh, and then a final surface treatment to make sure that they were good. It was a ton of work. This issue is now behind me. I have a new supplier who makes the screws and they come looking perfect like this. I will never be reworking screws again, but I am again in a position where I have a thousand of something that I need to fix, but it's not as bad as the screws. I told that story about the screws to remind myself that I've been worse straights before. I'm gonna get through this. The twin turbo vise is mounted to the underside of a workbench with two nuts and two bushings. This is a great configuration. I thought about it a lot. It eliminates the need for a rear jaw. The Veritas requires a rear jaw. I didn't like that. Uh, the Veritas also has just one point of contact. So they're very upfront about saying this is going to drop a lot. It's going to sag when you open it all the way. And if that bothers you, you can glue this wood block to the underside of your bench. This is really their manual. My configuration eliminates all that. Uh, the vise stays parallel with the bench, uh, even when you have it like eight inches open. The twin turbo vise also has smooth pipes that contact the board and don't mar it up like screw threads would when you open it and put a board in on its edge. But when the pipe sections exit the bushing mounts and the spinning screw threads contact the bushing instead, you do feel a jump in the friction resistance. Earlier this year, I launched a pre-sale for a new bearing guide mount that has linear bearings that contact the pipes and then transitions to axial bearings that roll with the threads when the threads get to the bearings as you're opening the vise. Really cuts down on friction. The new bearing block mounts to the underside of a bench or to a swivel mount exactly the same as the old ones did. But to facilitate the transition from one bearing set to the other, a small rail needs to be anchored to the back of the jaw. And this was all the instruction that I gave in the original video where I kicked off the pre-sale. The install of these rails is the only real time consuming part of swapping them out for the old ones. Looks good, but I got to remove more material now. Yeah, got a little sloppy there towards the bottom, but nobody's going to see it. Okay, not the prettiest thing in the world, but nobody is going to see it, except for all of you. And together it goes. So, fast forward seven months to today, the bearings have arrived, I start shipping, and I get some feedback that my instructions on installing that rail to the jaw were just a little bit light. So I put together some clips to give some more detailed instructions. Uh, so here's that. I use a square to mark the edges of the hole for the vise screw at the bottom of the jaw and then center a 3 8 inch space for the material I'll remove and then bring those marks back up to the hole. I mark the material that I need to remove and get to chopping. I chamfer the edge of the recess to account for the radius at the corner on the rail between the rail mount and the rail itself and fit the rail into place and notice that I have 3 16 of room at the bottom which I'll need after I drill the hole for the circular rail mount. which I did by hand with a one inch Forstner bit. By hand isn't ideal. You want this operation really perpendicular to the jaw so the rail is straight. I had to touch it up a bit with the drill press. And actually I used a shim to selectively bump it out of perpendicular so the rail is pressed against the pipe just a little bit. It's not a bad idea, although it shouldn't be necessary. Now the pilot hole for the screw and it's ready to install. 
but this might seem a bit much, even to a twin turbo vice customer base. So a faster option that is functional and just as good is to drill a half inch hole centered one eighth inch below the hole for the vice screw. You will need a guide for this and it needs to be clamped very well. Mine got a little feisty at the end, but no harm done. Now I can install the piece of scrap wood I used for this demonstration because I didn't have an actual vice jaw I needed to build. Notice anything off? That video you just saw versus the pre-sale video? A countersink. It's missing the countersink. All 1,000 rails are missing the countersink. I'm not going to get into who's at fault for that because it's me. Uh, and luckily for Karma, I'm the one who gets to fix it. So I'm going to be doing a lot of countersink drilling. And some of you out there received your pre-orders before I caught and fixed this. So you have the rails without the countersinks. I will send you ones that I fixed. No extra cost, just some details in the description. Don't feel that you need to live without the countersink. Uh, and don't feel that you need to drill it yourself. That's kind of a frustrating thing to do. I doubt many people will have an extension similar to what I had to buy for this to get the countersink close and square enough without the drill chuck banging into the rail. The timing for an issue like this is never great. It always feels like it happens at the worst possible time. Now is no exception. I'm behind getting production of twin turbo vice jaws that people pre-ordered quite a while ago, working hard trying to do that. I really wish I didn't have a thousand rail countersinks to drill, but I do, and I'm gonna do it. And at least now, this is my full-time job, so it's much easier for me to grind through a problem like this. If you wanna pick up a twin turbo vise and you want this low friction rail, it will come with one that I have modified. Any orders going, um, happening from now forward will have the countersink. Uh, and I also still have the pre-sale prices active for now. That won't last very long, maybe a few days after this posting, I should really be caught up. Um, so take advantage of that if you want to get a new vise or if you want to buy the uh, new guides for uh, an existing vise. Links for both of those are in the description. So check that out. Uh, I'm going to get back to drilling. Thanks for watching. Um, Dad, how is it turning? Well, you got to join my channel to learn how I did that.